Okay. Hi, everyone, and welcome to my senior TED Talk on the chemistry of hair color. Uh, my name is Oakley Felker, for those of you that don't know me, and I think most of you do. Um, today, I will be discussing um, what I've been researching for the last couple months. Um, so my research question was, what specific molecular structures create um, the healthiest hair and the longest lasting oxidative and permanent hair color? Can you, oh, do I have a clip? You do. Sorry. No? It's the, yeah, there you go. Okay. Um, so as you can see on this very blurry picture, um, is this is what a hair strand looks like. Um, this part is the follicle, which is, if you think about a strand of hair um, and put it in relation to a tree, the follicle is the root of the hair. Um, this is what anchors it to the scalp, and this is also where everything kind of stems from and where um, the keratinization process occurs. Um, sprouting off of the follicle is the hair shaft. Um, so the shaft is comprised of three layers, um, which are the cuticle, the cortex, and the medulla. So I'm gonna start off um, by giving you guys a little background on each of these. So the hair cuticle um, is the outermost layer. Um, it looks similar to this under a microscope. Um, it's comprised of cells that overlap, um, very similar to shingles on a roof. Um, this is, the cuticle is the first layer of protection against weathering and outside forces. Um, this can be anything from you know, like daily weather, daily wear and tear. As many people know, in Colorado, the air is very dry. Um, this can take a lot out of your hair, and if your cuticle is not strong, um, then your hair will be very dry. Um, so a flat cuticle, similar to this, um, where all of the shingles are sort of laying, obviously, flat, um, this shows that it's very healthy, and overall, when looking at the hair, you can tell that um, it is healthy because of how smooth it is and, um, yeah, how smooth and shiny it is, which gives a healthy look. Um, if these shingles were upturned, similar to if a tornado came through um, and lifted up all the shingles on your house, um, then your hair to the human eye would look very dry and frizzy, um, which is a sign that is unhealthy. So going back to this image, um, I'm going to move on to, I'm going to skip the cortex for now and move on to the medulla. Um, the medulla, as of now, does not have a lot of research done on it. Um, it is the core of the hair. Um, and it is, as far as we know, found in coarser, thicker hair textures and not even found in every strand of hair. So this is something that researchers aren't really spending a lot of time on because as far as we know, it doesn't have a large impact on like the structure of your hair overall and how it maintains color and health and everything. Um, so now we'll go back to the cortex. Um, and the cortex is, um, wait. the cortex is the largest section, obviously. Um, this is what makes up the bulk of your hair and this is where the natural pigment known as melanin is stored. Um, this is also where the most damage can be seen from hair colors and chemical processes. So as I just mentioned, um, the natural pigments that are stored in the cortex are known as melanin, which I'm sure many of you know what melanin is. It's what produces the colors that we can see in your skin, your eye colors, your hair. Um, so you, there are two types of melanin. There's eumelanin, which is seen in brown and black hair, typically darker hairs. And then lighter hair colors have pheomelanin. Um, and red hair color is a combination of these two. Overall, the structure of the melanin is relatively the same. It's just sort of how it's dispersed and the color that it gives off that's different. Um, so gray and white hair and very, very light blonde hair do not have any melanin in them. Um, this also 
occurs with bleach tear because all of the natural pigment has been removed. So melanin is made from proteins, um, and these proteins are made up of amino acids. The main amino acid um, is called tyrosine, and this is basically what makes up all of the melanin. Um, this is a tyrosine molecule, which is comprised of carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, and nitrogen. Um, and I'm sure many of you guys know this as well, that melanin is found in keratin. Um, and keratin is formed by many chains of amino acids, which are known as polypeptide chains. And between these polypeptide chains, there are polypeptide bonds, believe it or not, um, which is how they're held together. And these bonds can be broken only through chemical processes, um, so coloring your hair. And the way that keratin is formed um, is when these polypeptide chains bind together, they create helixes. Um, as these helixes are formed, they then form again into coils. And these coils then combine once more over and over again um, to make up the whole cortex of the hair um, as they form into fibrils or filaments, which are these larger ones. So as many of you also know, you guys know a lot, <laughs> there are multiple kinds of hair colors. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of temporary hair colors, semi-permanent, demi-permanent, and permanent hair colors. So a temporary hair color is one that just sits on the surface of the hair and does not penetrate through the cortex, or through to the cortex, or through the cuticle, which is the outermost layer. So it kind of just coats your hair and doesn't actually do any damage. Um, and that's the same with a semi-permanent hair color. Whereas a demi-permanent hair color lifts your hair a little bit. It pulls out the natural pigment, the melanin, a little bit, but not enough to cause as nearly as much damage um, or not enough to last nearly as long as a um, permanent hair color. So permanent, through this presentation, um, I'm going to be kind of switching back and forth between permanent and oxidative hair colors. They're the same thing. They're one and the same. Um, because a permanent hair color um, is one that goes through an oxidaz oxidaz oxidization um, <laughs> reaction, an oxidative reaction. Um, so without oxidization, the color cannot penetrate into the hair, nor can it stay. Um, so the pigment in artificial hair colors and permanent hair colors forms through, like I said, an oxidate, ox, I can't say that word, an oxidizational, I guess, an oxidational, that's the word, um, reaction, um, which is where oxidizing agents and bases come together. So most people know these oxidizing agents as hydrogen peroxide, um, another very um, common one to be used is sodium persulfate, and this reacts with the bases um, to create that hair color. So as it goes into your hair, I keep using the word oxidizing. I know it sounds like a lot, but that's what it is. Um, it oxidizes the natural pigment from your hair and places new pigment in, which comes from the base, which in this case, it's, this is the base and those are the developers. Um, so the oxidizing agents, hydrogen peroxide, let's say borrows electrons from the base in order for this reaction to happen. So if you think about um, your hair, if you think about your hair as a sponge, um, a dry sponge will absorb water into all of its little crevices and then it'll expand. So if you think about your hair the same way, um, that's what's happening as your hair is being oxidized. As it's oxidized, the sponge is drying out, and then the new color is filling in those spaces where the melanin used to be. Um, so through my research, um, I found that it's not specifically, that's why this is a little bit hard for me, it's not specifically the molecular structures that affect the um, longevity of your hair color or the health of your hair. Um, it's more so this, like a few other factors. Um, 
and things that can go into your hair um, or in things that can affect your hair. So we can start with alkalizing compounds um, as one of the first sort of outside things other than a permanent hair color to affect your hair. So while mixing a hair color, um, you use an alkalizing agent to open the cuticle. So naturally, um, your hair it has a pH between four and a half and five and a half, but when you add in an alkalizing agent, it makes it much more basic and brings it down the line um, towards the blues. So if your hair is, sorry, if your hair is more alkalinic, then it's easier to open the cuticle, the outside layer, um, and allow hair color to penetrate into it. Whereas if your hair is much more acidic, then, which some people have more acidic hair because of products that they use, um, it can be difficult for colors to penetrate into it, and your hair will not take that color. Um, so alkalizing agents, as well as um, opening the cuticle, can also help the peroxide to lift out the natural hair color. Um, the most common alkalizing agent is ammonia, which the specific one is ammonia hydroxide. Um, and this is why many people, when they think of hair coloring, they just know the smell. Even if you haven't had your hair color, most people know that it smells like ammonia and it stinks and burns your lungs. <laughs> so, um, the next thing that can impact um, the way that your hair color lasts and the health of your hair is the products that you, or I'm sorry, is the condition of your hair prior to coloring your hair. Um, so if your hair has been oxidized prior to this coloring service, um, it's much more porous, so it's like a dry sponge again. Um, and so it takes color differently than if you had virgin hair, which has never been colored before. So that's like a wet sponge trying to take on more water. It's harder for it to take than a dry sponge. Um, so ultimately, selecting the proper hair color for the condition of your hair will help keep your hair color healthy. So you can use things like a lower developer when coloring your hair. You can, of course, your hairstylist will know about this if you're looking to do this. Um, where you can use a lower developer. So a developer is, again, the oxidizing agent. So it's not as strong and it won't try to take out more of the pigment than there is in your hair. Um, and then you can also consider using, like if you even want to use a permanent hair color. Um, because if you just want like a pretty color for a couple months, like consider a temporary hair color because it's not nearly as damaging to the life of your hair. Um, so in addition to choosing the right hair color and that mixture, um, you can also think about the things that you do to care for your hair before and after um, a color service. So that can be things like doing a deep conditioner that fills in, it sort of fills in that sponge again. Um, and then your hair doesn't react as strongly to the hair color and it helps smooth down the shaft of your hair. Um, or you can also think about the amount of heat that you're using on your hair. It's all these different things that really impact um, how your hair is, like the condition of it. Um, so, um, as I end my presentation, I would just like to <laughs> remind you all to take, if you take anything away from this, take away that you want your hair to look like it's in a Pantene ad and that you want to take good care of your hair so you don't look like this poor lady um, who cried off all of her hair, bless her heart. Um, so yeah, thank you guys.